his father became king in 2015, few people outside Saudi Arabia would have heard of Mohammed bin Salman Al Saud. Now the 38-year-old crown prince is seen as the de facto ruler of the world's leading oil exporter. He is credited with a slew of reforms in the conservative Gulf Kingdom. He is also known to be a ruthless leader. He has consolidated power at home and made powerful friends abroad. So you can praise him, you can criticize him, but you cannot ignore MBS. A recent and rare interview to an American news channel has helped throw some light on the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. One of the biggest takeaways was MBS's admittance that his country is moving steadily closer to normalizing relations with Israel, a move which could essentially reshape the geopolitics of the Middle East. US officials are actively working on brokering the historic deal between Saudi Arabia and Israel. Reducing Arab-Israeli conflict could provide a counter to Iran. While the Crown Prince has historically taken a tough stance against Iran and its proxies, his approach to the country has been dicey. In the interview, MBS made it clear that his next steps would be seriously influenced by peace offerings from Iran. He won't back down from securing nukes if Iran successfully develops one. With Israel in his sight, it is obvious that MBS recognizes the potential benefits of cooperation with the United States of America and Israel, particularly in the areas of countering Iran's nuclear research. The 38-year-old prince may be open to closer ties with Israel, but he is aware that Iran and other Gulf nations have varying positions on their commitments to the Palestinian cause. Saudi Arabia's leadership in the region means that any steps it takes regarding Israel must consider not only its own interests but also the wider Gulf Cooperation Council dynamics and the Arab world's sentiment towards the Palestinian issue. The interview revealed that the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia lays major importance on monitoring his kingdom's GDP. Mohammed bin Salman has acknowledged that he doesn't mind allegations of sports washing if it contributes to the country's GDP growth. Saudi Arabia is also investing a lot in rebranding itself as a kingdom that is accepting of sports and entertainment. Using the Public Investment Fund, which is controlled by MBS, Riyadh is essentially stepping up its influence in the world of sports, buying major football clubs and getting big players to play in its own clubs. The PIF is the investment vehicle behind splashy deals in sports such as Saudi Arabia's takeover of Newcastle United and the LIV Golf merger with the PGA Tour. Portuguese star Cristiano Ronaldo, Brazil's Neymar, French striker Karim Benzema, Sadio Mane of Senegal and a number of others have all taken up contracts with teams in the Saudi Football League. It is estimated their various deals might top $1 billion in salaries for around 20 international players. All of this fits into MBS's Vision 2030 for Saudi Arabia. A shift from the kingdom's dependence on oil revenues to create education and job opportunities. It's about changing the education curriculum, increasing the participation of women in the male-dominated workforce and investing in the entertainment sector to help create jobs for the youth. Today, Saudi Arabia is a kingdom where women can drive and no longer have to be fully veiled. Men and women can walk around freely and attend cinemas and concerts without the fear of religious police. 
MBS has also sought to de-link the kingdom's image from its past role in funding and fostering Islamic extremist groups.